up with what's okay? Because I want to get into Griselda a little bit. But what is up with niggas hating? Is people taking sub shots at you online right now? Um, I it mainly I, I don't know. I'll be feeling like that, man. But then again, I, I maybe it's me overreacting. I don't know. It could be, you know, because yeah, you know, but. I be feeling like that, though. I feel like sometimes, like, being that my level up right now is actually, you know, going well, um, it, it might be some people out there just, just maybe throwing subs, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's not really reaching me because um, I'm 9 for 9. I'm about to be 10 for 10, 11 for 11, 12 for 12. It's weird to me. It's weird to me because... One of the things that I do when I see certain things happen is I start trying to go a little bit behind. I don't get too deep into the shit, but I try to figure out, like, did this dude do something? Did he say something to somebody? Or did he try to cross? And it's like, I never, I could be wrong. I'd have, I've seen, seen no evidence that you snaked somebody, that you was talking <laughs> greasy about somebody out of school or some shit. So I'm trying to figure out, like, where is the, the little hate coming from? I don't get it. Yeah, um, yo, bro. Uh, but you, but you. All right, long as you see it, and it, it ain't just me, you know. Saying, you know, like Flea Lord, you know, uh, I'm I'm that nigga right now because I don't make it seem like I'm better than anyone. I'm not in no competition or, or anything like that, bro. Like I'm in a competition amongst myself. Hmm. You understand? So, um, you know, like I I don't you know. I know a lot of motherfuckers is mad that Flea Lord is dropping a project every month. I came from left field 2017. Um, I was opening up for Griselda. They gave me the opportunity. I can rock my own fucking show now. You know what I'm saying? I can basically do anything that anyone can do right now. I just don't have um, certain ties with certain people, but I'm not even looking for that anyway because, like I said, I just get my bag on physicals and, you know, staying stay in contact with the people. When uh, the other opportunities come, if they come, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit, I, if the business is right, yeah. But I don't really even want no deals with no one. I don't need a deal. Like, before I wanted a deal, um, the deal was – you know, never brought to me with anyone. So um, basically, now that I don't really need to deal, like, well, I'm doing, I'm doing some shit for my brothers now. Like, I'm passing bags, like bags that motherfuckers are offering me. I'm passing them. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just been working very hard to put myself in this position now. So, you know, I, I if a deal come, I need a mill. They got to give me at least a mill for something. You know what I'm saying? Because and I don't, I don't masters. Do yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, and oh, my master's, like, I own everything, I, like, everything came from me, I own everything, you know what I'm saying, like, no manager, no PR, no nothing, I don't got none of that shit, I don't pay nobody for nothing, it's my Instagram and me touching base with the real people and the fans that support me, I never wanted to pay nobody for a motherfucking thing, like I said, appreciation dollar, it goes to the people I work with, but as far as, like, paying anybody for a feature, um, nope, never. So you know what my joint is? My joint is Mob Ties with Ito. Um, it's a crazy video. <laughs> I like that one because we get to see you on stage giving up that energy. Um, and it's like you and Ito is holding it down for the, for, the, uh, for the Latin people right now. How does it feel to carry on the legacy of Kid Frost, Big Pun, Fat Joe, and all that? Oh, uh, man, like it's, it's big, man, because um, like I said, you know, I named damn near everybody that put off for the show stuff, bro. How you feel, man? Um, I, I damn near name everybody that put on for the culture. So, like, you know, for me to be carrying on tradition, like, really for, like, Prodigy, like, that's my main, you know, because that's my, that was, like, my best friend and my mentor, like, big brother. So, you know, for, for me to carry on tradition for, like, P, and then, you know, the people that's no longer here and just, you know, it's, it's big. I can't even lie. But um, um, my thing is just passing on my message, you know what I'm saying, and being able to... uh provide for my family, make some money on this shit. Like, this is my job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is my job. This is how I feed my family. Like, you know, so um, I'm definitely like, uh, this, the, the reason me dropping these projects is uh, one, to show these artists that you got 30 days in a month. You only need a day mm -hmm. to do a song. So 10 days to do a, a 10 songs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then you get the project, you know, mastered and get ready, you know, get your artwork and all that. You got 20 more days to drop this project. None of my shit never sounds the same. Um, I'm working with, you know, legends, Pete Rock, Buck Wild, 
you know, God bless his soul, DJ Shea. I got a whole project with him, and he's no longer here. It touched my heart. Like, I can't even listen to that project because I fucking shagged. You know what I'm saying? Like, my tears just flow. Yeah. Um, yeah, because, you know, like, DJ Shea, like, let me mention this, man. Like, DJ Shea was, you know, the first person when I was on any Griselda show. He was, you know, and being the fact that I didn't make no money, all of those opportunities when I went on Griselda shows was for me to get a platform and get myself there. I was never a part of a Griselda budget. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I'm not Griselda. Those are my right. brothers. So it's like, yo, Flea, if you can make it shit, pull up. You know what I'm saying? I got you, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, basically, like, they always held me down. But um, I was on my own dollar and going out there and, you know, living on doing these shows. So I didn't really, I didn't make no money. But from the first show to my last show in L.A. where Hove was at and, you know, he was there, he greeted Khan, he, he was watching everybody damn near perform. I saw the video, um, yeah. Yeah, um, Shay, from that, yo, from my first show to my last show, bro, I didn't never get to pay Shay a DJ fee. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that motherfucker came out and he rocked my set with me. So, like, when I turn around, like, now it's like, it, it ain't going to be Shay there. So, you know, like, they, you know, they got the the years with Shay and all of that, that bond, they have that. So I know they all, you know, we all went through it too. Like, it still bothers me, but they really lost someone special to them. You know what I'm saying? He put on for them and they followed his lead and he got them where they needed to be. But Shay really was there for me too. Like, like how, like I said, he rocked my shows. I didn't pay him a DJ fee, man. That motherfucker held me down every time. Rest so in that's peace, why Shay, because as, as, as responsible as West Side Gun is for all of this, if it wasn't for DJ Shay, this shit wouldn't be popping like it is right now. Let's just, you know, Weston said this thing that that it was it was uh it was Shay that put the battery in their pack. Ronald Reagan, aka Ronsky, the the guy that came up with the GXFR logo. This this right, he came on here and said how important DJ Shay was to everything yeah. that's not only going on in upstate, you know, with, with Griselda, but also just upstate. He OG. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah, nah, man. He definitely rest in peace to the big homie, man. And I'm just, you know, I was glad that I able to got a project with him. And then, um, you know, we broke bread on a vinyl deal. We got a vinyl deal. We broke some bread. I sold some CDs for us. We broke some bread. And I was I was really happy about that, you know what I'm saying? Because um, me and Shay, like I said, I didn't get to never pay him a DJ fee. But for us to put out a project with each other and then I get to make a bag for you and it's like a decent bag it was like shit flea man yo you run the play flea like that's what you're telling me yo flea man you run the play man just shit set me out when you ready and i always took care of man you know what i'm saying so like you know all these projects that i dropped man it got a, it got a feel and a vibe they never sound the same and um you know i'm, ama I, I'm amazed by your work I'm, a, I'm, I'm sorry i'm amazed by your work because when i listen to the album um lord talk am i saying it right lord talk trilogy yeah um the last I, joint. I listened to this, and what, as, what I was thinking was, because I wanted to say, is it a downside of releasing an album every single month? And I wanted to tweet this last night, but I didn't tweet this, and I'm going to just be honest, because I, like, I never had spoken to Flea one-on-one. -on -one, and I know I'm about to interview. I was like, I'm not about to. I had a thought. I was smoking. I listened. I, was, I had a thought. I was going to tweet it. I said, I'm not going to tweet it. This is going to I'm really just on this jock. So I'm like, but I, so I can say it right here. There is a, a level of lyricism that I think a lot of people really not give you credit for. <laughs> and then with all of these projects coming out, it's no fall off. I want, what I wanted to tweet was flea really, you could tell flea really took his time with this shit. Right. So for people that's thinking, oh, you dropping like, you know, an album every month, the quality can't be that high. Listen to, listen to these albums, man. Like very high level shit is going on lyrically, and then there's certain there, there's certain cuts where you you nice as fuck on the cuts, and there's other cuts you just completely spaz the fuck out. And then it's these different influences. Like you never know what the beat gonna sound like. You don't gotta you don't have a particular beat that you stay with. You yeah. over here with it. You over here with it. I be here. I'm hearing electric guitars. I'm hearing some blues. I'm hearing boom bap. You know what I mean? I'm like that from one song to the next. And this is the thing that made me understand, and it, it, it goes along with what you do on your live. This dude loves music. Like, he yeah. loves music. Watch this. If you come on live, every time nigga come on live, nigga never flossing. Never, never flossing. No, don't be showing niggas money. Nigga, it's like, yo, I want y'all to hear this. 
That's every live. Like, oh, yeah. we in the studio with this nigga. He like, yo, y'all yeah. check this out. And he'll tell his boy, yo, y'all play the other joint. Like, exclusive shit. I don't know. Yeah. Where, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's no, there's no need for me. There's yeah. no need for me to be starting on niggas and shitting on people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whether I'm up or not, it, that doesn't matter because that don't make you a nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, having money just makes you, um, uh, you, you you're a big plate. That's what you are. You're a big plate. So when you when you floss it in the people's faces, flossing it, constantly flossing it, is they don't take that kindly. I know if you know if this is the old flea, Sonny, I wouldn't take that kindly. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't I don't do shit to shit on people. Uh what I will do is like now that I got, you know, two crowns on, on my wrist, I got two of these. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I got a date, I got a date just 2020, grown man one, and then I got the one that I could walk around and, you know, look like a rapper. But um uh the two that I got, basically, I gotta get like five or six more because mm -hmm. of these artists that I'm bringing with me. I need them to look up the par. So we all wear crowns. I'm gonna mm -hmm. get these niggas some chains. You know, I'm gonna get them some Lord Mob, um, some Lord Mob chains and some and some rollies. And then now it's time for you to put that fucking work in. That's right. Let's go. Let's take over. And you let's got some dudes over. that 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 you align with that's that's real serious about the work. So you ain't gotta ask them twice. Do I do like G4 who I wanted to get to? It might not be too close to the motherfuckers in the game than you and G4 Jack. Talk to me about your relationship. Oh, you man. He speaks so, so highly of you, bro. He speaks so highly. Yo. G4 Jag is is a a great a great person, man. Um, he's a great father and he's a, a great provider. So that's what made me tune into him more. You know, what I'm saying as a person. Um, and then the music, obviously, we was recording out the same studio. And then he gave me the opportunity to sit with him because he saw how I was working. Lord. You got Brody here with the stuff? Yeah, I'm gonna show you first. Yeah. All right. Here's the stuff. Right, here. Okay. Yep. So let me go ahead. Uh, all right, cool. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, G4 Jag was like, basically, yo, Flea, man, I, I, I would love for you to sit down with me and, and just pick a couple songs and, you know, uh, put a project together for me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, shit, say no more. Um, when I got to get up with G4 Jag, uh, he had 100 songs. I'm like, what the fuck? Motherfucker working. Right. You know what I'm saying? Working. So uh, I narrowed it 100. Like, I didn't listen to every hundred uh what i did was i have like a 15 second rule mm. you know i push i push it to 20 mm -hmm. um i don't like to tell nobody this but i'm gonna give y'all my secret on how i pick beats right now okay um maybe it can help people out but the, the the first 20 seconds is like it's crucial if that shit don't got that sound then it ain't it yeah and i don't care how, the raps i'm not looking for raps i'm looking for the sound and the beat so the first 20 seconds, I go off the, uh, you know, the sound, whatever. And I did that. I ran through like 50. I tucked 50. Um, I narrowed that 50 down to 25. And then from the 25, uh, you know, we got it to 15. And then I was like, 15 is too long. Uh, we need about 7 to 10. I think that's perfect. Mm. It's, um, you know, it gives you enough time to keep the, you know, your attention span on it. Because we have such a short attention span, like yeah. your thing, if your phone could ring right now and you ain't you listen to something, it's like, oh fuck the project. I gotta yep. talk. Yeah. Um, the game might come on, you should, and you might be listening. To, Man, fuck the project. You know what I'm saying? You might have to help your lady cook. You might have to take out the trash. You might. It just throws you off. So you need something that catches people's attention. Within it has to be 25 minutes, between 20 and 28 minutes, roughly. That's perfect for a project. If it's 35, if it's 30 minutes, 35 minutes, 45 minutes, motherfucker ain't giving you that much time in his right. day. Right, right. You know There's a lot saying? of stuff so, out but, there. Yeah, but if a nigga got to go somewhere and you say you get in your car, you got to drive somewhere, you might tap into this artist project and give him that half an hour ride. If it's an hour ride, you might bring it back and smoke a chopper, two choppers, and listen to that shit. Now, so you, everything you, is time. You, I look at it from time consuming. You executive produce progression. G4 yeah, now. so I, yeah, I, I narrowed it down from 100 songs down to 10. And we dropped the survivors. I got him the artwork and all that. I got G4 Jag. His, uh, I got him the CDs the way they were supposed to look. I got him um, a cassette, uh, cassette deal. And then uh, I got him a vinyl deal. 
I had him do an interview with this dude in Canada named uh, uh, The Desk of Low. He, you know, he's like, uh, the I know dude Lowe. from Canada is working hard. Yeah, so uh, he did an interview with Low on the strength of me. And um, I just tried to get G4 as lit as I could because I saw, like, how he was as a father. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the motherfucker spit his ass off. You know, um, his work ethic is just as hard as mine. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he and he can jot some shit down in about an hour. And shout to shout to Low. That's my bro. I always encourage me, encourage me back. I see he doing his thing, and he really got a love for the sport. Um, yeah. And G Four. Ever since I interviewed him, me and him has become very very cool. And he's helped me out in some things. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna lie. When he gave me the opportunity, it was good, bro. Good, bro. That's right there. Right. When he gave me the opportunity to um to do that to executive produce his project. And it went very well. That's why I realized how nice I was getting with this shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, I don't take nothing away from anyone. You know what I'm saying? Um, as far as, like, you know, where I'm going with this shit right now, like you said, like, it, it'd be a little, you know, funny shit. Like, just you can see it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you're a fan and, and you're a supporter of the hip-hop shit, you see what Flea Lord is doing, and then you see how... The people are embracing it, but then certain people are not. You see all the funny shit, but I really don't have time for that to even pay attention to that because I have people like G4 that I'm focused on. Besides me dropping these projects to finish off this year strong, I got Funk, I got TF now, I got Ito. Like, I'm about to be really focused in on, on, on a business side and still give them four projects next year. You know, I, I'm, I'm hoping that me and Alchemist could put one together. We, we had, mm -hmm. while I'm out here, we kicked it. You know what I'm saying? Me and Alchemist definitely kicked it. So I'm hoping we can do that next year. Me and Muggs is damn near done. I'm out to, after this interview, I'm going to see Muggs again. You'll probably see me to throw a picture up or a live or something with Muggs. But uh, me and Muggs just knocked out 10 songs in three days of us chilling. It's three days of us just chilling. Yeah. I, obviously, you know, um, I haven't even put Mug's name on my list yet because I got you got a list of people I want to talk to and I probably just didn't get it. But that's a guy I would love to talk to uh, in the future as well. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. Mug's is a great dude, a great teacher, Legendary. and um, yeah, man. You know, like when I spoke to him, I told him, you know, when uh, we dropped this project, it's basically in his hands. I'm letting him orchestrate the whole play. You know, what I'm saying, um, Rock Marcy is gonna fully produce one of my joints. I'm giving it to him. You, it's in your hands. You. You put it out to the people. I'm following your lead. Um, and I think with these guys that I do work with and, you know, that I look up to, you know, um, when I do shit like this and give them the opportunity to take control of the project, they respect Flea Lord more as a, you know, say as a person because I'm not going about it as, you know, listen, man, that's my music. You know, we got to do this. We got to do this. Oh, now I don't see I, man. Just do whatever the fuck you want to do. God, that's how I'm on it. Do whatever the fuck you want to do with the project. Just make sure we eat. Cause look at their track yeah, record, though. You yeah. talk, you talking to people that they got the track, they know what they're doing. So I mean, you yeah, exactly. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I, I put the ball in their court, like shit, man. Lock in. You know what I'm saying? Do what you do. So with, with you know, I got the Rock Marshy coming next year. I got the Mugs coming next year. Um, if me and Alchemist could get it together, I would love for that. And um, uh, pray for the Evil Trilogy. I'm dropping that next year to close that chapter out because I don't really want to jack too much. Pray for the Evil, but right. if they came out so ill and. I pray for the evil. I pray for the motherfuckers that's subbing us. I pray for everybody that's doing some wicked shit in the world, and hopefully you change your life around. I, you know I, listened, to that, I listened to that album, too. That shit is dope. But let me... I just put on IG the other day the... Uh, um, it could be better to... Sometimes praying for that dude uh, could be more effective than moving on him, is what I put on IG the other day. Sometimes we just got to yeah, take man. a breath. Real shit. That dude. That's a gem right there. Yeah. He gave the people a gem. Let me tell you how much cats sleep. This is in my notes. My philosophy. That's crazy. Niggas be sleeping. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and the video uh, is you and G4. Whose house was that shot at? Uh, that was shot up in uh, one of the homies' cribs in Rochester. Okay. So we had went up over there and um, basically uh, shit, um, we stayed there for like two days and uh, we shot that video like awesome. Like we didn't even was like going to shoot the video. I think I think we just went out there to just like get up with homies and uh, we wound up just knocking the video and that shit came out all right, man. A dope ass like, video. Dope video, you know what I'm saying? And me and G4, we talking the, our shit. That's the bar. That, that beat, that damn. beat, that beat is special. The beat is special. The vibe of the song, you know, like man, me and G4 got a good collection. I I tell you what, man, everybody that's under Lord Bob. 
we all worked already. Me and TF got work already. Me and Funk got a project already. Me and G4 got bad work already. Um, uh, Etho, me and Etho got Rock America. So I'm I'm bringing people that already got good. We got good uh, chemistry now. So now you take these dudes and the people I feel like I got good chemistry with. I'm gonna mix them with with each other. And here's take the me th take me out of it. Yeah. You know, take take me out of it because I don't have to be on every song. I don't want to be on every song. I want my bros to get busy. And yo, I, 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 I want I, I want to be able to orchestrate this play where it's like TF, Etho, and G4, Funk. Uh, TF and G4, you know, yeah. Etho, TF, and Funk, you know. I want to be able to orchestrate that place for them and build a, a, a relationship not only with this music shit, but on a personal level with each other too because now when Etho comes out to Cali, he pulls up on Funk and TF, his brothers. Yeah. We don't care, we, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, they, they enter the politics. They enter the crip and the, and, and the, and the power politics, these brothers. Mm-hmm. But they're also stand firm brothers. So, like, what y'all got going on with the politics, we got nothing to do with that. We bringing money to the table for us to eat and feed our family. This is what Lord Bob is doing. You know what I'm saying? So now, but I, I say that to say this. We're not just coming over here and, and just doing what we want. We coming over here and we breaking bread with the homies that's out here. And hopefully you can put on for your town, you know what I'm saying, and be able to help your hood. That's what we want to do. So with Lord Mob shit, like, see, I'm out here. I was just in a drop top fucking rolling around this motherfucker, living life, you know what I'm saying? But I'm in the, I'm in the neighborhoods where my brothers is patched in, and I'm I'm moving accordingly. Yeah, and I think as, as sort of an OG in the game at this point, Cat, Cats would like to hear your opinion on what's going on on the underground. Um, who do you like that's up and coming but may not be getting enough shine right now? And we're not talking about your brothers. We know Ejo, G4, and all those yeah. guys. But somebody yeah. who, the, who our audience may not be thinking of right now, who is um, kind of bubbling? So, all right, so yeah, you know I mentioned my brothers from Lord Mob, but we're not going to mention them because we know who they are. And uh, I think Riggs. Oh, Rigs, the cloth, you know what I'm saying? I think they should get more recognition. Yes. yes. Um, you know, uh, I, I want to I wanna hear some more music from certain people, so I, I don't want to mention them, but gotcha. you know, I would talk to them on a personal level. But yeah. I think I think Riggs is, you know, the cloth is one. Um, I, I would say uh, G4 has to be in there because he never gets mentioned, and this motherfucker works hard. So I agree with that. Um, I say pounds a little bit more. Pounds should be more mentioned, mm -hmm. but he's working hard. Um, UFO, there's a kid that's um, UFO Fev. Yeah, fe exactly. So you know him. So I think he should get. He should be getting more recognition because he's working. Yeah. Um, Black uh, G, they don't Masu, talk about enough. We, we, oh, of course, Black G's. You know that's my brother. We just shot the video. Um, Reef Hustle, another cat. Just you know heard what I'm saying? of him. Just heard of him. Yeah, he, you know, uh, basically he he was like right hand, he right hand of of, of Fred the Godson. Mm. You know, he and he's under trust, like he fucks with the trust family. He fucks with Lord Mob too. That's my brother. Uh, there, there's a couple more people, but um, you know, um, I'm gonna throw a couple names I, I out just because I got I got a list on my phone of people that I'm supposed to. Tap maybe you with. can help me with some people I didn't. Yeah, mention, and I'm not, I just I'm not, a couple people. You know, what I'm saying yeah. that I think should get more recognition. Obviously, we going to uh, Hus Kingpin. We're going to agree on that, Hus. Yeah, um, Hus. Hus is yeah the wave guy. Uh, Sun is out. Um, is, I think that's his new name right now. Raw Wattage is the homie. Um, uh -huh. I fucks with. Uh, you talked about the cloth Illinois is somebody from there. That whole cloth camp. Um, Willie the kid. We got people got to start like showing. Yo, you know what's crazy? Um. I tapped into his music and I just followed him. Me and him follow each other back, and we, we just you know what I'm saying exchange just a couple words. You know what I'm saying. Um, but I I think I'm definitely gonna reach out on some music. For, you know with Willie Kid. I want to work with him. You know what I'm saying. He's fire. Yeah. Um. Uh. Uh. I, I tell you, Esther Knack and Al Davino, they they they're pretty dope. You know what I'm saying. They got some good shit. Um. Damn man, who else man? Uh. I mean, you know, there's interviewed. people that's. There's just, people that are, that are mentioned, but then like I would think they need to be mentioned more. Like I fuck with Nems. Nems wraps his ass off. Yes. And he's like very really, like uh, his his bars is like crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, he got a crazy voice too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Daniel Son, another good dude from and you Canada. You know, I just he's, had him on the show. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's my brother, Crime Apple. Like 
all these guys basically like I think they should be mentioned more, but you know what I'm saying? Like like I said, I, I don't really get to listen to too many people, but when I tap into these guys, you know what I'm saying, I think they could be mentioned more because um they are dope as fuck, you know what I'm saying? Rain that's out here. I believe he's from New York. He's been sending me stuff. I like him. My boy John Rain, Diggs. Uh, I, I know a Rain that makes beats. I don't know about a Rain that R E I N. This dude got some stuff. Oh, R E I N. Yeah. No. He put this shit in my DMs. He, he crazy. John Jiggs. And I'm missing somebody and I'm forgetting. Um, uh, 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 what's, uh, is it Uncle, uh, Uncle Sam? Uh, Uncle John. Pump, Uncle John. There you go. Woo, he, he crazy. Rapping. Yeah. Yeah. He be rapping. I know he probably won't even expect me to mention him, but yeah, I'm tapped in. My dude, you know Mike Wise from Trinidad. That's that's the homie right there. Um, oh, he's he's a rapper as well. Oh my, you got to hear this dude stuff. Yeah, I got to hear him. I tap yeah. in. You know, I, I I, I'm gonna send in. it to you on the DM. Y'all might be able to do some stuff. He he tight. Yeah. You even li do you listen to your shit? You go back and listen to all of this music. Um, I listen to the project probably like the first three days when it comes out, and then I just look at the numbers and see how's it doing. But then I go into like new beats because it's like ah, i accomplished it it's done you don't you know, know. you don't you you so you don't know now nah, actually you, like i, I want to go back like when this when this year's over i want to really sit back and listen to my catalog and see how fucking dumb i was going because because you don't like know, i said you don't realize it's like how three days yeah it's like three days i listen to it and it's like i have another job right now and that's next month so this whole year has been like that last year it was a little different you haven't heard yourself. You haven't heard yourself evolve on wax the way we have. You've been working on it so much. So I, because I, I, I wanted to say, do you know where you, how crazy you is right now with the bar? Like you and I, I, did I say this earlier in the interview or did I forget? You and Ito with the pen game. It needs to be said. Y'all are getting better. I'm not kissing nobody's ass. Yeah. I'm not saying this to get. I'm talking about. I've listened to some music from back then. I listened to some music from yesterday. The pin game is getting better. Both of these fucking artists. It's amazing to watch. Yeah, nah, I can't even front, man. Um, Ito's like one of my favorite rappers. Like for real, he's one of my favorite rappers. And I told you, like the Griselda and Rock Marciano, Thirty Eight Special, and then it could go. It could trickle down from there. But um, as as I'm saying though, like. Really, Ito, man, like, me and Ito got a good chemistry. Me and Carl, we got a good chemistry. Um, me, and, me and Wes got a good chemistry. Like, whenever I work with these guys, it's like, it be magical, man. Like, the shit be hell, bro. I can't even lie. Like, you ain't gonna never hear nothing whack come out from, from especially my side or just when I'm working with anyone. Like, you're not gonna want to skip anything we put out. I make music that you're gonna go back and rewind, not fucking skip. Yeah. Real you know so let me ask you this. Who is your favorite lyricist of all time from the South? From the South? I would have to say uh, probably like Big Boy. Wow. Big Boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, fu I, fuck with, I fuck with Outkast heavy, man. Like, I love Outkast. And I, I, and I could... A three, I'm a, I'm over three stacks guy. To me, three stacks is like top five DOA. That's just my and um, and, and and I fuck with uh Juicy J too. Okay, yeah, and Scarface Juicy is like J. probably my top of all time from the south. Scarface, I just I love I love um, Uncle Face. Um, yeah, oh yeah, Face. He he's he a big homie, but you know, like I, I just it's just something like with Outkast, man. Like both of them. But really, big boy be talking this shit though. You know what I'm saying? Andre yeah. 3000 is hey, very, very, plus, very, 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 very talented. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? and of course, got big boy got mad busy on uh, the Sleepy Brown thing. Um, yeah. Woo. Yeah. And and Sleepy, I think don't get enough credit. Sleepy smooth with it. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever had a problem with a show promoter? Um. No, but uh, I had problems with like security many times because these motherfuckers be getting out of line and shit. And I try not to, you know, being that, you know, I, I go, I go prepared wherever I go. I'm prepared, so um, I keep my cool, knowing that I'm prepared. Yeah, because if you know you're prepared, sometimes you can people lose it and want to override because they're prepared. They ready. Yeah. yeah. But I don't. I keep my cool. But you know, I had problems with like security. Never, never no promoters. Cause um, basically like uh, 
majority of my shows came from me opening up for Griselda, and it was never like a book show like where I've got paid. What is next for Flea Lord? Shit, this Lord Ma Venture, man, like get these other guys, you know. Um, with Lord, but with, with Flea Lord, I have fans all over the world. You know what I'm saying? All over the world. What's up with the Japan thing? What's up? What's up with the Japan thing? Y'all y'all popping in Japan. Yo, it's crazy, man. Like Japan is like they're buying everything I drop. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got hella supporters everywhere, like uh Argentina, Russia, Germany, uh France, um man, uh Norway, Denmark, like all these places like China even be buying. So I'm like, how the fuck did you hear me? But then I go back and then I think of Prodigy because mm -hmm. Prodigy, you know, a hip hop icon, he had so many fans everywhere all over the world. And then it's like, they linked on me after Prodigy's passing. Like, you know, cause Prodigy posted me on his gram a couple of times and they knew me and Pete was tight, mm -hmm. you know? And if you look on his page, you would see that, you know, he didn't really post too many people, but he posts flea shit. Mm. He posts Law Talk 1, and then he posts a video that I had with me and my homie Scotty that me and Scotty had a falling out front for over 20 years, but, you know, worth ethic wasn't serious as mine, and we just we didn't see eye to eye, so we just cut ties, you know what I'm saying? Still my brother, love him, no hard feelings, but if you ain't trying to do what I'm doing, I need to get away from everybody. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, you know, Pete definitely, um, you know, man, Pete, Pete created this opportunity for me, and... uh. You know, I have these fans all over the world, so now I get to open up that door with, you know, the Ethos, the TFs, the G4s, the Funks, and let them hear their sound as well. And then hopefully they take a liking to it the way I like it because I love their music. You know, like, shit, I've been, I've been actually listening to their music while I'm out here. And then when I go home, I'm like, oh, shit, I got that new song now. Like, I, you know, let me go back and hear this one. You know what I'm saying? So I'm tapped into their music, and I just feel like the opportunity that was, like, that is here for me I'm creating it with Lord Ma for these guys, and I think it's just going to just actually just take off, man. I feel like this is going to be a great, you know, business venture with all of them. That's fantastic. Hey, Flea Lord, listen, this conversation was a, a long time coming. I'm so glad mm -hmm. we, that we had it, that you was gracious enough to come by and bless us with your presence. I'm sure I, just like everybody that's watching this video, is excited to see what's coming next. So, Flea, thank you. Uh, from the Mike Power Show and the whole audience. I want to pass all my gratitude from them to you. Thank you for blessing the platform and uh, God bless you and good luck to you and all your future ventures. Appreciate you, bro. God bless you and yours too, man. And uh, shit, let me know when you need me back on, man. We talk some more shit and give some more information to the people, bro. Oh, we got to definitely got to do that. Let's go. I'm, I'm going to talk to you when I, when I click this button right here. I'm going to talk to you when we go off camera, just so you know. So don't go. <laughs> all right, shit. I'm going to shoot you my mask. I'm going to shoot you my mask. So you just call me and shit. All right, that's what's up.